my name is Kara and I live in Dubai for more than four years now. And ever since I came here, I've been living in places where I have to share the room with other people. And most of the people who live here in Dubai lives with other people because getting a place to live in just for ourselves will be very expensive. So we look for a place where we can rent for a cheap price or our company where we work for provides an accommodation for us. That way, we can share the expenses like the electricity, the water, and the internet. There are some people who even share food or groceries. And when we really get close to each other, we can even share our knowledge, our experiences, and some advice. So there are good things to having a roommate, but of course, there are also bad things because you live with another person, so that means different nationality, different gender, different religion, different attitude, different way of thinking, different perspective in life, different upbringing, different style, different work, different workplaces, different um, experiences, different schedule, different sleep patterns, different routines, different likes and dislikes, and so much more. So there's definitely gonna be some issues between people sharing our room. That's why in this video, I'm gonna be talking about those issues and I will give you some tips on how you can avoid fighting with your roommates. But before we start, just a disclaimer, I did not make this video just for the sole reason of calling out my roommates for what they did or what they did not do. This is also a self-reflection and a reminder for myself. So, let's start. Respect. Just like what I've said earlier, everybody has differences. That's why we have to show some respect. Number one, we came from different countries, cities, provinces, and we grew up in different households. That's why we have different culture, beliefs, religion, and upbringing. For me, I've had roommates who came from the same country as mine, but different city or province. And I've also had roommates who came from different countries like India and Pakistan. So there's definitely a lot of differences between me and my roommates. But I've learned to respect them, their culture, their religion, and their beliefs. First, let's talk about culture. For example, if my roommate is cooking something in the kitchen and I don't like the smell of it, I cannot ask my roommate to stop cooking because it's part of their culture and she grew up eating that food. So instead of fighting over the smelly food, I'll just go inside my room and stay there until the smell goes away. But if I really need to go to the kitchen, then I'll just hold my breath before I go in. Now let's talk about religion. For example, if my roommate is a Muslim or has a religion that doesn't eat pork or meat, or if my roommate is a vegetarian, then I'd be very careful in the kitchen not to mix our utensils so that we will not fight over it. Lastly, let's talk about beliefs. Since we have different experiences in life, we can't ask our roommates to believe in the same thing we believe in. Because if we insist on what we think is right or what we think is wrong, then we will just end up fighting over it. Number two, we have different types of work and we have different workplaces. So that means we have different stress levels, different schedules, different routines, and different sleep patterns. There are people who can easily go to sleep once they lay down in bed and there are people who has hard time sleeping immediately. There are people who can sleep very deeply even if there's a lot of noise around them and there are people who wakes up immediately from sleep even if it's just simple noises. So we have to be really mindful of our actions once we enter our room so that our roommates who are already sleeping will not be disturbed from it. When you open and close the door, you have to do it very slowly and carefully for it not to make a noise or a loud bang.
Once you enter the room, try to walk around very silently. If your shoes are making noises, then just remove them and just wear slippers or you can try to walk around on tiptoe. When you try to fix your things, try to do it very slowly and carefully as well so that it will not make noises. If you want to watch videos in your cell phones or laptops, then just wear headsets so that your roommates will not hear what you're watching and they will not get disturbed by it. Typing something from your keyboard can also make a noise. You can minimize the noise it makes by putting a cover. So shout out to Ate Janelle Ching for giving me this laptop keyboard cover. If you don't want to put a cover on your keyboard, then just go outside the room so that you can freely do whatever you want to do with your laptop and your roommate will not be disturbed from sleeping. Put your phone in silent mode or vibrate mode so that your roommate will not get disturbed every time you get a phone call or a text message. But if you got a call and you really have to answer it, then just go outside the room. Number 3. There is a lot of reasons why our roommates are not cleaning in the house such as they are tired from work or they have other important things to do or they feel lazy on that specific day of their life or they grew up in a household where they are not required to clean because other people does the cleaning for them. So we cannot force our roommates to clean in the house just because we feel that it's unfair. And all we can do is to just clean the entire house ourselves because nobody wants to live in a house full of dirt, right? If you have a roommate who loves to clean, then be grateful for it. Thank them and show them you appreciate them maintaining the cleanliness in your house. Don't be abusive because your roommates get tired from work as well. The reasons I gave earlier like being tired from work or doing something you think is more important or being lazy or being brought up in a family with a lavish lifestyle doesn't give you a free pass not to share the responsibilities in the house. A friend of mine once taught me her philosophy in life Shout out to you, Ate B, that if you don't want to clean, then don't make a mess. And if you made the mess, then clean it yourself. That's another way of how you can show your, your respect to your roommates. You can clean during your rest days or after work if you have an available time. In the common area, you can dust off the furniture, sweep and mop the floors. In the kitchen, you can clean the oven and the counters after cooking your food. And then you can wash the dishes after you eat. Also, you can sweep the floor and mop it as well. In the washroom, you have to make sure that you flush the toilet after urinating or pooping so that it will not leave a stain and it will not be hard to scrub it off. Also, you can rinse off the sink and the shower area or the bathtub after using it and then you can also sweep or mop the floor. My mother taught me when I was a kid that the washroom should be the cleanest place in the house because you'll know what kind of a person lives there. And my mother was right because if you fail to clean the washroom, if you don't flush the toilet every time you use it, then your roommates or your visitors will think that you're a very disgusting person. Number four, never touch or use or borrow your roommate's things without permission. Don't open your roommate's cabinets, drawers, or cupboards just to check your roommate's things out. And never ever steal from your roommates. If you need something and you think your roommate has it, then ask your roommate first. Then, once you got your roommate's permission, that's the time that you can touch or use or borrow your roommate's things. After using or borrowing your roommate's things, you have to put it back exactly where you took it and exactly how it looks like before you borrowed it. It means you have to take very good care of something you borrowed because it's not yours. So don't break it. That way, you'll gain your roommate's trust and the next time you need something from your roommate again, your roommate will not hesitate to lend you anything. 
But if you accidentally broke whatever you borrowed from your roommate, then you have to inform and apologize. Maybe your roommate will understand and will be kind enough to let it slide. But I strongly suggest that you either pay for it or replace it. That way, you will avoid having a fight or any kind of issues with your roommate. Also, there are things that are very expensive or very valuable that your roommate will not allow you to either touch it or use it or borrow it because they wouldn't want to risk it being broken. So instead of borrowing it from your roommate, it would be better if you buy it for yourself. This also applies to money, guys. For me, I have a safety deposit box in the cabinet that was provided by our company in our accommodation. But not all places have it. So wherever your roommates wants to keep their money, whether it be in their wallet or in their bags or in their cabinets or in their drawers, then never ever steal it. If you really need some money, then just ask your roommate if they can lend you any amount. And if your roommate is kind enough to lend you some money, then you have to pay for it. However big or small the amount is, whether it be 500 or 5, 100 or 1, because your roommate worked hard for it. And your roommate worked hard to earn that money for their family, so it's not yours to spend and just forget. Number five, everybody has a story to tell because we experience a lot of things in our everyday lives. There are good things and there are bad things. There are people who love sharing their experiences to other people, but there are those who doesn't want to share anything at all. Also, there are people who doesn't care about what other people thinks or says about them, but there are those who easily get hurt about what other people thinks or says about them. So, you really have to be very respectful of your roommate's privacy. If you and your roommate are not close to each other and neither one of you guys are opening up to share life experiences, don't feel bad about it because maybe your roommate is just a very shy person or a very introverted person. So don't judge your roommate and don't conclude that your roommate is a self-centered bitch who doesn't care about anybody and only thinks that the world revolves around him or her. Also, don't comment on your roommate's personal life because you are not the one who went through those life experiences. And most especially, don't spread rumors, gossips, or false information about your roommate because you will just end up fighting once your roommate finds out that you are a backbiting bitch. Now, if you and your roommate are very close to each other and you can talk about anything under the sun and you can share about anything life has to offer, then cherish your friendship. Your roommate didn't give your front row seat to his or her blockbuster life just so you can run around giving people spoiler alerts. Try to apply the saying, what you see, what you hear, when you leave, leave it inside your room. Number six, good communication is the key to having a good relationship. If there is something that you wanted to say to your roommate, whether it be good or bad, especially bad, just say it. Don't keep it to yourself. Because if you do, then little by little, it will pile up until such time that you will not notice, you're just gonna go and explode. If you think that your roommate will not listen to you, or will feel bad about what you're going to say, or will be angry at you after saying it, then stop for a while. Let it cool down. Maybe wait after a few hours or a few days, and think of a better way of how you can say what you wanted to say without offending your roommate. Positive scripting, guys. Now, if your roommate came to talk to you, don't be defensive or feel offended because your roommate doesn't want to fight. It means that your roommate wants to discuss and resolve something with you. Also, learn how to apologize when you're the one who made the mistake. And don't let get pride get in the way. Number seven, always put yourself in your roommate's shoes. Before you do anything, ask yourself, if I am my roommate, will I like it or not? Always think if your roommate will be happy or will be angry at you if you do this or if you do that. And remember the golden rule. 
do unto others what you want others do unto you. Because if not, there's always a karma bitch. If you do something bad to your roommate, then your roommate will be triggered and might do something worse to you. And you guys will just end up having a revenge fight against each other and it's not good for the both of you. Number 8. When everything fails, just leave. If you think your relationship with your roommate is not working anymore and cannot be salvaged, just look for another house or another room or another place to live in. The world is big. You will definitely find another roommate who will click with your personality. So that's all the tips I have for you guys on how to avoid fighting with your roommates and of course the issues and resolutions I've mentioned in this videos are just basics and there's so much more that I was not able to mention. So if you guys can relate to this topic and know some more issues and tips that we can add here, please feel free to comment down below and I hope you guys enjoyed and learned a lot of things from this video. So please like and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching. Bye!